Alright then gang, so in the last lesson we set up an Express app and we installed the Node MongoDB driver. The next thing we want to do is connect to MongoDB using that driver so we can interact with it to do things like fetch data and add new data. So to do this, I'm going to make a new file called db.js, which stands for database.js. Now you don't have to do this, you can do all of your code in the app file if you wish, but I like to keep my code clean, reusable and modular, so I'm putting all of my database connection code in a separate file called db.js. Anyway, ultimately in this file we'll be essentially creating two functions. One function to initially connect to a database and one function to retrieve that database connection once we already have connected to it. And both of those functions are going to be exported from this file so we can use them in our app.js file later. So let's start by saying module.exports and setting that equal to an object. This is how we export things in a node application, right? And inside this object, we'll have two properties to represent the two functions we want to create and export. So the first one is going to be called connect to db, which we're going to set equal to just a function for now. So the job of this function is going to be to initially connect to a database. And then the next property that we want after this is going to be called get db, which will also set equal to a function. So the job of this function will to be ultimately to return our database connection after we've already connected to it. And that database connection will allow us to communicate with the database. So there's going to be two steps here, right? First, we establish a connection to the database using this first function. Then we return that connection to that database using this function. So the next thing we need to do in here is import something called the Mongo client from the MongoDB driver package that we installed in the previous lecture. So to do that, we can say const and then in curly braces, Mongo client. And then we set that equal to require and we want to require from MongoDB. And what this does is destructure the Mongo client object for us from the default value returned to us here. So it's this Mongo client that's going to allow us to connect to a database and we're going to use it inside this connect to DB function. So we can say Mongo client and then use a method on that called connect to connect to a database. Now, this connect method takes in an argument called a connection string. Now, a connection string is like a special MongoDB URL for a database, and it needs that in order to connect to the right database. Now, when you're working with MongoDB locally on your computer, the connection string is going to look like this. MongoDB, and then a colon, and then forward slash, forward slash, localhost, and it's going to be port 27017 and forward slash and then your database name. Now I called my database bookstore so I'm going to put that at the end and this would be our connection string to that database on our computer. Now later on in the series I'm going to show you how to connect to a remote database hosted somewhere else using MongoDB Atlas but for now this will do. So now we have this connect method, which is connecting to our local database called bookstore. Now this is an asynchronous task, which takes some time to do, and it returns a promise that we can then tack a then method onto to fire a function when this is complete. Now inside the function fired when this connection is complete, we get access to a value as an argument, which we'll call client. And this represents the client we've just created by connecting to the database. And on that client object is a method called DB, which returns to us, in essence, the database connection, or at least an interface through which we can interact with the database we're connected to. So I'm going to extract that and store it in a variable called DB connection, right? Now I'll initialize that variable near the top of this file, but I'm not going to assign a value to begin with. And then only after we've connected do we update that value. Also, we can tack on a catch method to the end of the then method to catch any error if there is one when we try to connect. And we can fire a function which does something with the error. For now, I'm just going to log that to the console, but you can handle this a different way if you wanted to. All right. So that's the connection function sorted to initially connect to the database. 
and we'll eventually call this function from our app.js file to start that connection up. But first, the next thing I want to do is flesh out this other getDB function as well. Now the sole purpose of this function is to return a value, which is the database connection, because that value will then be used to communicate with the database to do things like add data, read data, remove data, etc. So we already have that DB connection value and we just need to return it right here. And it can be all done in one line without the return keyword since there's no additional logic. So now this function is just returning that single DB connection value. And we'll be calling this function later as well from the app.js file after we've connected to the database because then we know we'll have a value for the DB connection, right? Now there's one more quick thing I want to do in this file and that is to add an argument to the connect to DB function. And that argument is going to be a callback function, which I'll call CB. So in the future, when we call this connect to DB function, we pass in as an argument another function. And essentially, that's going to be a function that we want to run after the connection is established. So after we update the DB connection variable here, we can then return a value, which will just be the callback function and we invoke it. And actually, in the catch block, we'll return the callback function and invoke it too. Only this time, we'll pass in the error object, all right? So basically, when we call this connected DB function from another file, we pass in a callback function as an argument that we want to fire after we try to connect to the database. So that's either after the success of that connection attempt or after we get an error from the connection attempt, right? And in the case of an error, we also pass the error into the callback function as an argument, okay? All right, so that's this file pretty much complete now. Now we just need to call these functions from the app.js file. So obviously the first thing we need to do is import the exported function from the DB file. So let's say const and then curly braces and then what we want is connect to DB, then a comma, and we also want get DB. And then we can just set that equal to require and then a path to the DB file, which is just dot forward slash DB. All right, so we have these functions now, but where and when do we want to call them? Well, ideally, we want to connect to the database right away before we even start listening for requests to this API. So let's do a comment that says database connection or something like that near the top of the file. And then under the comment, that's where we want to call the connect to DB function. Now, remember, this function is going to connect to the database for us, and it also expects us to pass in a callback function. And that function is going to fire either after the connection is successful or if there's an error. So let's also pass in an error function as the argument. So what is it that we want to do in this callback function then? Well, if the connection was successful, we want to then start listening for requests to the Express app, since we know that we can communicate with the database at this point. But if there was an error, we don't want to do that, since if requests come in, then we won't be able to process them correctly without a working database connection. Now remember, in both cases, whether the connection worked or not, we fire this callback function. But in the catch block, if there was an error, we passed in the error into the callback function when we called it, right? So we can accept this argument in the callback function right here inside the app.js file. Now, if the connection was a success, then this error argument is just going to be null since we don't pass an argument into the callback function when it's a success. But if there wasn't a success, then this error is going to have a value. So we can do a little live check to make sure that we don't have an error. And then if we don't have an error, then we can go ahead and we can start listening for requests, right? So that means that we have to cut out the app.listen function and then we have to paste it back in to the if block right here. So now we're only listening for requests after we successfully connect to the database. All right, so we're listening for requests once we've connected, and now there's one more thing we need to do. We need to call the other function, getDB, to have that database connection object available in this file. So 
let me make an empty variable above where we call the connected DB function called DB, but you can call it what you want, doesn't really matter. And then after we start listening for requests, once we're connected to the database, we can update that variable. So we can set it equal to get DB and invoke that function. And that's gonna return us the database connection object that we need, because it's this object then that we're gonna use in this file to interact with the database, to fetch data, to save new data, update data, etc. And that, my friends, is pretty much it for the setup. Now we have a DB file which exports two functions, one to connect to the database and another to return the database connection. And we invoke those functions in the app.js file before we start listening for requests. And now we have this DB object that we can use in our different endpoint handler functions. So in the next lesson, we'll start that process by fetching all of the documents in this get request handler.